Hey guys, welcome back to the Normandy and the Sheena Shepherd Show. <laughs> that was stupid. All right, guys, we are all caught up on the Codex. We've talked to everybody on the ship, pretty much know where we stand in terms of the story and whatnot. And I think it's time to do some more exploration. Get back out into the galaxy, maybe do the next story mission. I did get some good feedback from you guys in terms of the planetary exploration stuff and what we kind of want to see out of this Let's Play. It sounds like a lot of the extraneous planets really don't add anything to the story or the overall vibe of the world. It's just kind of a lot of busy work. So I think I'm going to be skipping a lot of that stuff, which is fine because my Let's Plays are never meant to be 100% Let's Plays. It's just what I deem to be, you know, play through essential stuff. So I don't remember which of these systems here we've actually fully explored. I need to kind of get in here and check these out. Altaya is an unusually large terrestrial world with a trace atmosphere of methane and ammonia. The surface is frozen and mainly composed of sandstone and other sedimentary rocks with deposits of iron and chlorides. Judging by the sedimentary composition of the crust, it appears that Altaya once possessed an atmosphere thick enough to support some form of liquid. What cataclysm stripped the atmosphere and let the planet to freeze is not currently known. Yeah, so I do want to still read a lot of these, and I want to do the surveys and whatnot, just because we get stuff for it. But in terms of actually, like... Commander, I'm picking up a signal from the planet's surface. It looks like an automated distress beacon. Really? Okay, so there's something going on on Edelus. It's a terrestrial planet with an atmosphere of carbon dioxide and nitrogen. Edelus's surface is covered by wide deserts of silicate sand, with only a few areas of igneous rock highlands to break the abrasive dust-choked winds. Edelus's orbit is congested with debris thrown inwards by the gravity of the gas giant Atamalka. Due to a high rate of meteor impacts, exploration is highly dangerous. Ooh. Well, that's actually kind of interesting. I think I am going to go check that out, actually, because I don't know what that's going to lead to. But before we do that, let's actually just go through the rest of these worlds and see what else is there is in this uh, system. Atamalka is a large hydrogen helium gas giant with traces of chlorine and sulfur in the atmosphere. Its massive gravity well tugs many asteroids from the outer belt inwards, past the orbit of Altaya and Edelus, and eventually settle into the inner belt. Atamalka's orbit is congested with hundreds of captured moons. Most last only a few thousand years before being ejected, dragged down into the atmosphere, or ripped apart by tidal forces, and added to the gas giant's immense rings. Attempting to navigate this chaotic environment is hazardous at best. Ships without military-grade kinetic barriers are likely to suffer catastrophic impacts. And upon survey, we detected a large concentration of hydrogen. Not super exciting, but cool. Got it. Up here, we have All Sages. Small Distant Alsages is a small terrestrial with a trace atmosphere of methane and argon. The surface is composed of water, ice, and calcium with occasional deposits of light metals. During the Alliance's pirate suppression campaign in the 2160s, the Batarian Eluam Ron Para was caught with his frigate Tuneron, grounded on Alsages for drive discharge. When challenged by the cruiser Hyderabad, Ron Para refused to surrender. The Tuneron was destroyed attempting to take off. The debris is strewn across the southern hemisphere. Cool. Can I find some? No, but we got a small deposit of plutonium. Plutonium. Plutonium's a funny word. Say it with me. Just say it out loud. Plutonium. Here's an unknown thing. Upon scanning, we have found an asteroid cluster. Cluster. I said that weird. A collection of small siliceous asteroids loosely bound together by gravity. Prothean data disk. While scanning the asteroid field in the Sparta system, you found signs of habitation. A recon team was sent to investigate one of the larger asteroids. The rock had a small functioning biodome, but no sign of anyone still living there. There was, however, a data console with an intact Prothean data disk inside. Badass. Finding stuff, guys. Making it happen. Tremon Ray. Tremon Ray is a dwarf planet composed of light magnesium silicates with deposits of aluminum. Its surface is covered by wide swaths of ancient dark basaltic lava, possibly indicating the world was created through an impact with some other body in the system. Ooh. Tremon Ray's magnetic field is non-existent. This makes it impossible for ships to dump drive charge from orbit. That said, Tremon Ray's minuscule gravity allows even cruiser-sized vessels to land safely for direct grounding. Interesting. And then we did look at that one. Is there anything else out here? Any other glowies? Nope. Looks like we're good here. Okay, let's go land on Edelus, guys. I have no idea if this is going to be worth doing or not. <laughs> it's kind of the downside to playing a game like this blind. 
Let's see. I think we're going to bring along... I want to keep bringing along Tali for the tech right now. And then I think we'll also bring Rex. That sounds good. There may be some things we need to hack down here. Whoa. Yeah, they did say there's going to be a lot of asteroid impacts on this planet, aren't there? Does that mean... Do I actually have to dodge those things? Oh, look at it. That's so cool. Okay, it was worth landing here just for the spectacle alone, honestly. My god, that's dope. Reminds me of, like, Death Mountain. Okay, over here's the distress signal. Over here's debris. And an anomaly up there. Okay. Let's try and do these... In order of ascending level of interesting, it seems like it's going to be. Total guess on my part, but we'll see. Come on, Mako. Get up there. You know, instead of having the jump jets on this thing, what we really need is a nitrous boost. Oh, I see something off in the distance over there. I don't think I was on the map. Hold on a second. Might just be a, uh... Some kind of deposit or something. That's probably what it is, but... We've gotta go make sure. I like how I said that I wasn't gonna be doing a lot of this Mako stuff on these extraneous planets. And then, like, five minutes later, this is exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> oh well. Uh, you know what? From afar? It looked like this was actually something kind of like man-made. Like not a natural formation, some kind of piece of tech. But I guess I was wrong about that. Okay, large deposit. Well, just a regular deposit of lithium. Cool. We did get a thousand credits for that though, so... Hard to be mad. I guess this is a really good way to farm XP and money if you're really worried about that stuff. I think I've been doing an okay job with that. I'm more interested in getting the XP out of the conversations because those are actually unique. And I feel like they do add a lot to the atmosphere of the game. So yeah, I think once we're done here, guys, however long this takes, then we'll probably head off to an actual story mission. But let's just cruise through this planet first. Salvage this. Electronic skill is too low. See, that really bothers me. Even having the forethought to bring Tali, who's like the electronics master, right? I still can't do that. And there's no way around it. I wish I could just like spend the Medigel. And uh, just kind of like brute force my way through it. Because I would do that. Sorry, Omnigel, not Medigel. You guys know what I mean. But as it is, it's like, well, I guess I will just have to come back for that later. And that's probably not something I'm ever going to do, because even if I remembered... <laughs> it's just like, it's so far out of the way, I'm like, eh, it's probably really not worth it. Wish I could just do it now. Hey, we knew coming into this that Mass Effect 1 wasn't a perfect game, right? I mean, that's well documented. It has its flaws. It's still enjoyable regardless of its flaws. We're not going to let that bring the whole experience down. Alright, where are we at here? Oh, it's right there. I ran right over it. <laughs> that looks like a droid. Mummified Solarian. Holy shit. We have to hack the mummified Solarian, guys. This is how space exploration works, okay? We found Captain Milan's identification tag. How, the, how it ended up here is impossible to know for sure. So this is probably related to a side quest we picked up, right? I honestly don't remember the specific details right now. But I'm pretty sure that's what that was about. Some point in the future, I will go in and check the journal on that. Wait, let me double check this. Yeah, that is where I want to go. Okay. So. Let's put the Mako to the test here. Can we get up this really steep incline? Yeah, attaboy. 
But yeah, man, we need a turbo boost on this thing. That'd be dope. I want to ramp off these rocky hills. Pull some sick-ass jumps. Some sweet tricks. That's probably the most fun I've ever had in a Halo game, actually. I love the Halo games. But some of the most fun we've ever had was in Halo 1. Just playing this little game we invented called Warthog Wars. Because in Halo 1, the Warthog didn't take any damage. You could crash it into things all day long. You could not blow that thing up. It was indestructible. So getting two people in a Warthog, holy shit. Okay, there's something big down here. <laughs> uh, getting two people in a Warthog and just running into each other and just trying to like crash each other out and flip each other over was so much fun. We used to do that for hours. Anyway, what's the deal? That's an Alliance Marine? Is he friendly? That thing's not! Motherfuck, a Thresher Maul? Okay. Oh, are you gonna let me save here? You're not. I better not die here. I'm gonna keep my damn distance from this thing. Oh! He closed the gap really quickly! Okay, be careful. Be careful. Fuck. He comes up really close. Move! Move, Mako, please! Oh, shit. Oh! How did I know that was gonna happen? How did I know, guys? I just knew. <laughs> what did he even do to me? Oh. I have to redo everything I did, don't I? This... Oh, this... This stuff really sucks. This aspect of this game really, really sucks. What's back here? Did I see this before? Who the hell are you? Why is this thing just hanging out here? It looks like another kind of Mako model. Hello? Weird. It's like an abandoned vehicle. Somebody left it here. I guess they had to, right? Something happened and there's just no way to search it. I figured I'd be able to search it somehow. But apparently not. Well... I don't know if I can get eyes on that deposit I found before. That's good money. I'd like to get it again. Is it up here? I think it's right up over this hill. Yep, there she is. On my way. I guess this is on me for not saving every ten seconds. Like I knew I was supposed to. Okay. Next up will be this deposit up here. I guess realistically this really doesn't take that long. It's just annoying. I am an old school gamer, guys. But I've also been modernized in a lot of ways, and having to do the same thing over and over and over again... Just not fun. Anytime you have to, like, repeat something in a game... Especially something that's not really that engaging, if we're being honest. Alright, oh, nice. My tech skill is too low for that. Ah, oh, shit. Okay. Go scan the solarium. We're going to need that for the side quests. I feel like I got a little speed boost there. Just from tapping on the thrusters. I don't know if that's my imagination or if that actually works. These planets aren't randomly generated, are they? Because this feels like it's a much more direct route than it was last time. It's a little odd. I 
Uh, I guess I just took a wider angle getting here. It seems like he is in pretty much the same spot. I don't know. Kind of hard to tell. Shist. This is a difficult one. Oh, I'm going to fail this, aren't I? Yep. Ah, uh, do I get to try again? Thank you. That at least is very very generous of them. Okay. Now we can go here fight this a-hole again. I guess that death was kind of my fault because I was trying to get away from him, but I don't know, I didn't control the Mako right. It felt like it just kind of stalled out right there. And then I just exploded. I'm not even sure what kind of attack he did to me. But I knew that if I got too close to him, it was going to end poorly. I just knew that intuitively. I wonder if there's a way to tell where he's going to pop up. I guess the best way to do this is to just kind of try to keep your distance and end the fight as quickly as possible. Just freaking lace into him, right? Maybe save these marines if we can. Where are you? Okay, stay on the move. Not too close. Maybe the radar? Yeah, the radar will show you where he is before you even see him. That's good. That's a nice whiff, huh? Cool. Just try not to run over the marine. <laughs> oh shit. Okay, we can't stay still though. Oh, seriously? Ah. Oh. He's got a really devastating physical attack, apparently. Jeez, man. Yep, can't get even that close to him, I guess. What a jerk. Somebody's got to take this guy down a peg, guys. It's got to happen. Thresher Maul. That was effective. See, right there, I'm not sure if um, if that was going to be like a one-hit kill no matter what health level my Mako was at, or if I just let the health get too low. I know the shields didn't do a damn thing to stop that. He just kind of punched me right through it. Oh, boy. <laughs> Mako loves to get spun around and face you backwards when you're trying to drive forward. It's almost hilarious how frequently that happens, honestly. It's better be a damn good reward, man. I'm telling y'all. I want some mad XP for this. I want to level up from this. Because this guy's strong. Like, really strong. Don't worry, Marines. I'll save you. Don't hit me. That did hit me. Look how much damage that did. Right away. Okay, let's see if I can get far enough away. And then heal up. All targets down. All targets down. That's not true. There's no way that guy's dead. Man, the repair takes a long time, too. Okay. Come on out, man. 
We need to settle this. What if I just sat here and laced into him? Nope, he's doing really good damage. I wonder if I can jump that. It's probably not worth trying. Oh god. Motherfucker always comes up behind me, too. It's really annoying, actually. Ugh! Okay, that time he didn't. Come on, come on. Oh! Really? Really. How in the world are you supposed to avoid that? Everything else that's happened up till now, I've been like, okay, you know what, I guess... That's partly my fault, like, I can see what I did wrong there. But that was utter bullshit. He just popped up right below me. What the hell? That's extremely stupid. I can't believe they haven't fixed this. Like, some of their design philosophies with this Mako stuff... Oh, cool! I'm alive, though. Somehow. Let's see if I can get far enough away to actually heal. Dude, and your shields are worthless in this fight. He just bypasses your shields completely. It's like, what the hell? What a stupid fight. That worked! <laughs> oh, fuck you. Oh, fuck you. There it is. Okay, I figured out the strategy for those guys. Stand still, jump over their shit, and just lace into them. Now we know. Alliance Marines. You guys are all dead, aren't you? Soldiers. Looks like they were lured here by the distress beacon. Oh, that sucks. Should we? Oh, these were his dudes. Okay, cool. We found them. Well, now we know. But this never would have happened if it wasn't for this distress beacon. Should we? <laughs> Should we disable this thing? Can I do that? I don't think it's going to let me do that. Alright, well... I guess we'll just leave it there... for the next Traveler to find and get ambushed and murdered. It's the strongest distress beacon in the entire galaxy. It deserves to live on. Okay, cool. Well, that'll uh, just about do it for this, I believe. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I have forgotten how to get back to the Normandy. Here we go. We also got a codex entry for that. Okay, so next time we find ourselves back at the Citadel, we can turn that in. And let's see what we picked up on the codex. Oh, probably for the, um, the creature we killed. After the Geth, Thresher Maws are subterranean carnivores that spend their entire lives eating or searching for something to eat. Threshers reproduce via spores that can lie dormant for millennia, yet are robust enough to survive prolonged periods in deep space and atmospheric re-entry. As a result, Thresher spores appear on many worlds, spread by previous generations of space travelers. The body of a Thresher never entirely leaves the ground, 
only the head and tentacles erupt from the earth to attack. In addition to physical attacks, threshers have the ability to project toxic chemicals and emit bursts of infrasound as a shockwave weapon. The Alliance first encountered threshers on the colony of Akuz in 2177. After contact was lost with the Pioneer team, Marine units were deployed to investigate. The shore parties were set upon by hungry threshers, and nearly the entire assault force was killed. Alliance forces recommend engaging threshers with vehicle-mounted heavy weapons. Yep, gathered that much myself. But thanks a lot for the heads up, I guess. Extinct races, data disks. Despite all the evidence confirming the existence of the Protheans, little is known about their culture and society. From time to time, dig sites will yield new clues, but after 50,000 years of decay, little of value is unearthed. Recent research has focused on the discovery of Prothean data disks. On their own, they are frail and rarely found in one piece. Occasionally, however, an intact disk will be discovered within a console or reading device. To date, over three dozen disks have been recovered, and a few of those have been restored to the point where researchers can begin analyzing them. I thought there'd be more than that. Though it may be some time before scientists discover a way to transfer the data off the disks, they are currently considered the most tangible leads for learning more about the Prothean culture. Wow. So the more of those we find, the better off humanity is. Because we're not getting a lot of them, apparently. Okay, well, uh, that planet sucked. And it just reinforces my belief that we really don't need to do all these, although I am glad to kind of wrap up that side quest for that guy. And I think we've hit all of these in Artemis Town now. I think. Eh, I might not be right about that, but we're going to move on anyway. So, we've got the Citadel, we've got Noveria and Pharos, and we've got the two DLC locations. I want to move on to either Noveria or Pharos, and I don't really know which one I should be going to next. I guess it probably doesn't matter. I haven't really heard much about that either way, so I guess it's just kind of a coin toss. What do you say we start over here in Pharos and just kind of work our way back around the galaxy? That sounds like a good plan to me. Now we're in the Attican Beta. We've got Hercules and Pharos. Hmm. Those are the only two systems in this cluster? All right, well, let's look at Hercules. Message coming in. Patching it through. Normandy, this is Alliance Command. We're detecting your presence in the Attican Beta Cluster. One of our surveillance drones was gathering intel on Geth activities in the region when it was spotted and shot down. You need to go groundside and recover the drone's data module before the Geth find it. Do I? Do I really? That doesn't sound like something I need to do. And why is this guy giving me freaking orders? I'm a Spectre. That's not the way it works anymore, bud. Better get used to that. Alright, see ya did. This is, the proximity of the energetic star Hercules causes constant blue and violet aurorae in Siyidid's nitrogen argon atmosphere. During periods of increased solar flares, the aurorae are bright enough to read by on the surface and can be seen with off-the-shelf optics from a distance of several AU. So an AU is an astronomical unit, and it is the distance between the Earth and the Sun. So when it says, like, 2 AU, it's twice the distance of the Earth to the Sun, which is about 93 million miles on average. Seated scorching hot surface is mainly composed of magnesium with deposits of iron. A surprising variety of simple carbon-based life flourishes in a complex network of cave systems that wind through the crust, protected from Hercules' heat and radiation. Whoops, I completely hit the wrong button there. Still not super used to this interface. Uh, let's see, we were on Seated, and we need to survey this. While scanning Seated, you discovered a large debris field in geosynchronous orbit. Chief Engineer Adams conducted several detailed sweeps of the area and detected a few items of interest, including a League of One medallion encased in lead molding? What in the world is a League of One medallion? And do I care about that? Somebody please tell me if I care about that. Because <laughs> I don't know. Zathoron. Zathoron is a small rock planet with a thin atmosphere of carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide. The surface is scorching hot and mainly composed of sulfur with deposits of boron. Sounds kind of similar to Mercury. Which, by the way, guys, I need to correct myself on something I said a number of episodes ago. So I mentioned that 
Mercury is kind of an interesting planet because it gets very hot and very cold, and I thought that that was because it has um, a synchronous rotation around, um, you know, its orbit with the sun, which meant that the same side was always facing the sun, kind of the way the same side of the moon always faces the Earth. Um, that's not actually true. Apparently, that was believed to be true up until, like, the 60s, and then it was actually disproved. So I guess I read a, an outdated fact somewhere along the way, but I was correct about Mercury being very hot and very cold because it has no atmosphere, so it doesn't trap heat. So during the day on Mercury, when it's facing the sun, it gets insanely hot because it's really close to the sun. But when that side of the planet rotates away from the sun, all of that heat is released because it has no atmosphere to trap it and it gets insanely cold, even though it's really close to the sun. That is true. I looked it up and confirmed it. <laughs> Anyways, it's a Taurus. The Taurus is a hydrogen, he hydrogen helium gas giant with high level decks of sulfur clouds. A layer of hydrocarbons has formed deeper into the atmosphere. Vast electrical storm fronts can be seen flickering across the dark side. While scanning this planet, you detected a large deposit of gold on a nearby moon. How about that? Gold, an entire planet made out of gold, guys. That's probably out there, by the way. That probably exists. Did you guys know that... I think it's, um... I think it's only like 50 light years away from Earth. I could be wrong about that fact, but we have found a star that's literally just a giant diamond. It has the composition of a giant diamond. And astronomers actually nicknamed it Lucy after the Beatles song, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. One of my favorite space facts, crazy shit. And then here's Elatanya. Elatania appears to be a world eminently suited for colonization. Sadly, appearances are deceiving. It is covered by a verdant carpet of mosses, algae, and lichen that possesses a thick, oxygenated atmosphere, but the animal kingdom is a web of microscopic symbiotic creatures. These are impossible to filter from the air and necessary for the native life to thrive. Unfortunately, they also cause anaphylactic shock when inhaled by non-native life. In short, settlement requires either fully sealed environment suits or replacement of the entire world's ecosystem. Some have proposed limited colonization at altitudes above the symbiote's range, or in areas where favorable winds keep the air clear. I don't know, that sounds pretty damn dangerous. Okay, we can actually land on this one. Are we gonna do this? Fuck, I guess so. <laughs> it sounds like it might be important. Okay, Tali, you're gonna stay where you are until you get your shit together. You know, maybe we should actually bring Liara. We haven't really piled around with her yet. Yeah. Okay, Garrus, you're gonna chill here. We're gonna bring Liara. <laughs>